Hello everyone, this is Jay Dobbins on the Marvel DC Multiverse. We are now at episode 325, and I'll be doing a review on Venom, Let There Be Carnage. So, spoiler alert, if you have not seen Venom, Let There Be Carnage, I strongly suggest that you do not listen to this episode. You've been warned. So, um, in 1996, a... Young, um, Cletus Cassidy, watches helplessly as his love, uh, Francis uh, Barrison, who um, has the ability of uh, sound manipulation, is taken away from St. Astis, home for unwanted children, to the Ravencroft, sorry, Ravencroft Institute. On the way, he uses her uh, sonic screen powers to escape and attacks a young police officer, Patrick Mulligan. He shoots uh, Barrison in the eye and suffers a injury to his ear due to her scream. So, uh, unbeknownst to Mulligan, who believes he killed her, Barrison is taken to the facility, which is hardened against her powers. Uh, in the present day, Mulligan, now a detective, um, contacts Eddie Brock to speak to uh, Cassidy, a serial killer who refuses to talk to anyone other than uh, other than Brock following their interview a year prior. After the visit, Venom's uh, sorry, Venom, uh, Eddie's symbiote, is able to figure out where Ca uh, Cassidy has hidden uh, the body of victims, um, which gives Brock a huge career boost. Brock is then uh, contacted by his ex-fiance, uh, Anne Wing, Wing, sorry, Wing, um, who tells him that he is now, sorry, that she is now engaged to Dr. Dan Lewis, much to um, Venom's displeasure. Cassidy, who was found guilty of his crimes and uh, earlier sentenced to death by lethal injection, um, invites Brock to San Quentin State Prison where Cassidy is detained on death row to attend his execution. However, Venom is provoked to attack Cassidy via insults towards uh, Brock. Uh, Cassidy bites uh, Brock's hand ingesting a small part of the symbiote. So, and then, uh, of course, back home, um, Venom, uh, wanting more freedom to eat bad people, uh, has an argument with Brock, and the two end up fighting until the symbiote detaches from his body. Um, they go their different ways, of course. And uh, Cassidy's execution fails when a red symbiote emerges and uh, Brock's, sorry, and blocks the, um, not Brock's, but anyway, uh, Cassidy's, Cassidy's execution fails when a red symbiote emerges and blocks the injection. He introduces, uh, he introduces himself as Carnage and goes on a violent rampage through the prison, uh, freeing inmates and uh, killing the uh, guards, of course. So, But um, Cassidy and Carnage uh, then make a deal. Carnage will help Cassidy break out uh, Barrison from Ravencroft, and Cassidy will help him eliminate Brock and Venom. Mulligan calls Brock and warns him about the situation, of course. In Ravencroft, um, Cassidy frees Barrison, and they travel to their old children's home to burn it down so um mulligan has this um sorry mulligan suspicious of, suspicious of brock due to his interactions with cassidy before carnage emerged takes brock to the police station um brock refuses to answer mulligan's questions and contacts wayne as his lawyer Brock reveals that Venom has separated from him and needs a symbiote to fight Carnage together. 
as Venom makes his way through um, San Francisco by hopping from body to body, Weying um, finds and convinces him to forgive Brock. Um, she bonds with Venom and breaks Brock out of uh, the police station. So Brock and Venom make amends and bond again. So Cassidy takes Mullen hostage, and Barrison captures Wayne after um, failing to find Brock. Barrison gives Lewis information on Wayne's whereabouts, and he gives it to Brock, of course. And Cassidy um, and Barrison plan to get married at a cathedral where Venom appears to fight Carnage. Barrison seemingly kills Mulligan by hanging him onto a chain. Um, Venom holds his own against uh, his spawn, but he is eventually overpowered brutally by Carnage. Um, and the latter decides to kill Wayne atop the cathedral. Um, so uh, Venom manages to rescue Wayne in time and provokes Barrison to use her powers again. Her sonic um, blast causes both symbiotes to separate from their host as the cathedral collapses um, on a falling bell, uh, kills Barrison. Which the bot, which there's no body though, but um, but yeah, Venom saves Brock by bonding with him. Before the impact, um, so Carnage tries to bond with Cassidy again, but Venom devours the symbiote. Cassidy states that he only wanted to be Brock's friend, but Venom uh, bites uh, Cassidy's head off. While Brock um, and Wing, Wing, um, and Lewis escape, a still living Mulligan's eyes uh, flash blue. Brock and Venom decide to take a vacation while um, they ponder their next steps. As Venom tells Brock about the symbiote's knowledge of other universes, a blinding light transports them from their hotel room to another room, where they watch J. Jonah Jameson reveal Spider-Man's identity as Peter Parker on television. So that was the post credit scene, of course. That part where um, Eddie, Eddie and Venom are in a hotel pondering their next steps and they get transported into another, to one hotel room, sorry, one hotel room to the next. Which means that Venom is now in the MCU, obviously. So, And then, of course, that's the only post credit scene. So there are no other credits after that, I believe. So, um, I'm going to give this movie a, I guess, an 8 out of 10. And here's why. One, you killed off you killed off uh, Woody Harrelson's character, which you shouldn't have done, and that was really a bad move. Um, everything else was good, except that part. And they obviously took the movie where, um, in the Maximum Carnage movie, sorry, in the Maximum Carnage comic books, Carnage was never on death row. Was he, well, yes, he was, uh, I guess, a mental patient, but he eventually escaped. Um, well, actually, no. I think, I think what happened was Eddie Brock and Carnage were in a prison together. And Eddie escaped, leaving a part of uh, the symbiote behind, obviously. So he left a small drip of the symbiote behind, and it bonded with Carnage, and that's how he escaped. Then, of course, he escapes later on and goes to New York, obviously, in the Maximum Carnage books. So, um, however... They decided to do a different approach, which was to 
Um, I guess they were they. I guess they wanted to do a maximum carnage, but the, I don't count this as a maximum carnage. However, the part where um, Cassie escapes from prison, that part was from the maximum carnage uh, comic. They just, so that's just that one part. But I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think that's the last we saw Carnage, despite the fact that Venom bit his head off. But that, but you know, he was killed in that universe, well, the Venomverse. However, in the MCU, I'm thinking he's still alive. So, if um, I think that the like the multiverse is going to take um, is going to create. I think I think what happens is I think I think Carnage might end up get being transported into the MCU as well or multiple reality. So they could you know with the multiverse they can do that, but um, I don't think that's going to be the last we've seen of Carnage. If it is, then Sony just screwed up pretty much. But I want to see. Not only do I want to see Tom Hardy take on Tom Holland Spider Man. I also want Tom Hardy's Venom and Tom Holland's Spider-Man take on Woody Harrelson's Carnage. So hopefully they bring Carnage back into the, you know, into the, uh, hopefully they bring him back, put him in the MCU, put Scream in the MCU, along with other characters like the mutant called clone Double Ganger, the Demo Goblin, and, um, dang, there was another character. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I'll figure it out later. But yeah. They need to start actually... If I were Sony, I would start reading the Maximum Carnage comic books. Just so I can have another... You know, Venom movie. But to have... The, this is There's no way... That you, you don't bring Carnage to life only to kill him off. That doesn't make sense. So hopefully... He's... You know, hopefully they bring him back just in multiple realities. Like the MCU. And don't turn in the MCU. Just don't don't have him as a serial killer. Just turn him into a convict or something like that. You know, be like convict Cletus Cassidy has escaped. You know that can work. Or criminal, or professional criminal, or you know just a mental patient, or um, Escape convict or escape criminal or criminal or don't use the word murder. You know, I mean, you got you got kids watching these MCU movies, so. But um, everything was good except for that particular part. I don't like that they. I don't like the idea that they killed Shriek, and then um, killed Carnage on top of that. So everything was good except for that, and they could have made the movie a little longer, you know. And then of course you got a uh, Mulligan. Who's I guess is supposed to be Toxin. So now I'm starting to wonder, you know. Obviously they left some symbiote behind for him. So I'm guessing there's still more drops of symbiote that could lay that could bond with that could bond with the headless uh um Carnage. Or sorry not headless Carnage or a headless Cassidy, so we know he left some spawn. He left some of that um, a drop of symbiote behind. But the question is, how much? Because obviously, it bonded with Mulligan. So who knows? You might get a reanimated Cassidy at some point. So, but um, yeah, everything was good except for that. The writing was good. Um, I like how they brought back She Venom. Um, I like how Screech was introduced, or Sh Sh not Screech. Shriek was introduced. And of course, Naomi Hammers, as fine as she is, was good, was perfect for that role. So, um, yeah, they could have made it longer. They could have done more. But to be honest with you, I'm happy. I'm glad that um, Sony still has the rights to Sp to the Spider-Man characters. However, I don't trust them with you know these characters. Because right, because the first Venom was good, but then the second Venom, you know, they could have done better. But you know, they 
didn't let's just say they should never they should not have killed off Cletus Cassidy or shrink you should have kept them alive for a maximum carnage movie but now I'm kind of wondering whether or not they're gonna do one they had a chance but I don't know if they but they might have blown that you know an opportunity to do that judging by how they wrote it so I mean I I would like for them to keep the rights to spider-man but they got to do a better job because if they don't, you know, they got to, of course they got to keep doing Spider-Man movies or Spider-Verse movies just so they can keep the rights, but they got to, they got to do this right. So hopefully they bring back Cassidy and Shriek for the Maximum Carnage movie if they ever decide to do one or bring that to life so they can have it to where, okay, you know, the symbiotes or other symbiote villains like, uh, was it Toxin? Was it, uh, I guess, Riot? Um, Scream? You know, they could come from different multiple dimensions. You know, and bring them into the Spider-Verse. Or, sorry, into the MCU. For another, I guess, Spider-Man trilogy. Where they could focus on a black costume, and they, and they might end up having a, another trilogy where they could focus on a clone saga. I don't know. But they have so much to, they have so much to work with, and I don't know if they're gonna do it right, but obviously, without the aid of Disney uh, and Marvel Studios, Spider man wouldn't be making no billion dollars so um I think they could have done more, you know at least keep the two characters alive instead of killing them off but then again nobody nobody saw um shriek's body, so she might be alive still, and it's kind of hard to tell. But, um, anyway, oh, but, and before I forget, um, the Venom Let There Be Carnage movie made, uh, $424.9 million with a production budget of $110 million. So, obviously, they got that production budget money back, so good for them. And hopefully, you know, the third Venom movie is going to be um, a Venom versus Spider-Man type deal. So, they could do a, a probably a Venom trilogy that way, or they could just have it to where Venom just fights Toxin in a multiple universe. I don't know. But, sooner or later, Venom's going to, you know, Tom Hardy's Venom's eventually, eventually going to take on Tom Hardy's sorry, Tom Holland's Venom, sorry, Tom Hardy's Venom is eventually going to take on it's, it's going to have to eventually take on um, Tom Holland's Spider-Man. So, but we'll see what happens. But um, yep, special effects was good. Um, sooner or later, you know, Venom's going to have to get that Spider-Man symbol on him. So I don't know. I don't really, you know, I don't know what they're going to do. But I don't trust them with the Black Costume Saga because I mean they got a lot to work with, but I don't know how they're going to do it and. All you gotta do is just read the comic books so they can get a better idea. I mean, geez. That's like Robert Rodriguez when he read the Superman, when he read the Sin City comic books. He read the comic books and he did it perfectly. And that's how you have a perfect movie. Read the comics and just get an idea. Man, shoot, you could pretty much write a script by just reading the comics. You know? He could turn it into a script, but we don't know what they're going to do, so, but yeah, good job, and hopefully you don't screw this up, so, but anyway, so yeah, writing was good, the cast was good, um, yeah, music was good as well, soundtrack, so yeah. Um, that concludes this review, so feel free to visit us like us on Facebook. We're available on iTunes, Google Play Music app, Spotify, and of course, YouTube.